There is a rule in my family that if they don't want my opinion, they shouldn't ask for it. Because I have one quality that can be both irritating and frustrating to people, and it is that I tend to be, well, rather blunt. I recognize that at times this can be very disconcerting to people, but I also know that it's the only way I know how to confront difficult issues. I, I confront them as directly as I possibly can. Now that doesn't mean I go out of my way to be mean about it. But if you ask me what I'm thinking or what I believe should be done, I'm going to tell you what I think. And ultimately, as particularly as we listen to the first reading today, as Christians, we have a responsibility to speak the truth. And not only that, we have a responsibility to tell others when they are doing things that are wrong. Now, these two ideas, well, are not very popular in our day and age because, quite frankly, you don't have a right to decide that someone is, is doing something wrong, number one. And number two, by making that statement, you are sort of judging that person. Now, neither of those two ideas are actually correct. Yes, you can. Truth is not subjective. It's not determined by the individual, even if our society believes that it is. Truth is objective, real, and defined. And it is defined by God. We do not actually get to pick and choose what we think the truth should be. And of course, that again is not very popular. But at the same time, as a Christian, if we call someone out on something, we don't have a right to tell them that they're also somehow a bad person for doing it. We have a right to judge the action, but never the individual. So, as we come to confront the truths that, that we are called to face, those difficult moments, we also have to recognize that as we confront these moments, we have to do it with humility, compassion, mercy, and love. Paul tells us that in the second reading. The humility is the recognition that we don't fully appreciate the choice that the person is making. We might know it's right or wrong, but we can't be always discern why they are making that choice. Which is why part of it will be that we have to listen to where the person is coming from. We have to be open to what is happening in their lives. And in that, we have to show compassion. Compassion in its root form would mean that we would suffer with them. Compassion means that we unite ourselves to what it is that they are struggling with and helping them to see that they are not alone and that they are not being judged for this choice but just being called to look for another way. And we have to be open, having that open heart of mercy. For mercy recognizes again the brokenness of the other. And this is the humility. We also have to recognize our own brokenness. And so our mercy is that we are there with them and for them. Letting them know that in that choice, they are still loved. 
they are still desired. And so how we confront this, our language and our attitude are so important. If we use language that doesn't really meet them, that doesn't really help them, then what we're saying is pointless. And if we have an attitude where we, we see ourselves as somehow better than them, then we've already lost. It is those four attitudes of humility, compassion, mercy, and love with a language that the other can hear. And it has to be at a time that is appropriate to them. And ultimately, once we have confronted the issue, once we have helped them hopefully to hear, we must also not continue to harp on it. Because most times, as we're dealing with something in someone's life, it really is a once and done reality because we should see ourselves as instruments of the Lord. It's not about us speaking to the person. It is about God using us as his instrument to speak to the person. And ultimately, all we're there is to plant seeds. And God will, make, will take care of the rest. It, it will be God who will bring it to fruition at his time and at his choosing, which can quite honestly frustrate us a lot because let's be really honest, many times we think God is wrong about that. But again, God knows the person's heart and he's there to help them to grow and to understand. And if they don't respond to our entreaty, we must still treat them with respect and dignity. They must still know that they are truly unconditionally loved because ultimately a person's actions do not define who they are. We are not a sum total of our choices. All we have to do is look to the good thief. As he hangs on the cross, what does he tell the other thief? We belong here. We deserve what is happening to us. And he turns to Jesus and says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus responds, this day you will be with me in paradise. If his life was simply a sum total of everything he had done, then Jesus would have said, well, too bad for you. As we come then and seek to be the Lord's instrument as he calls us into the lives of others, let us recognize the truth of what we are called to do. And it begins with recognizing that as Christians, as Catholics, we have the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth is not just a set of ideas or propositions. The truth is a relationship with Christ. And that is ultimately where we are trying to lead people to. It's not simply trying to get them to stop doing things that are wrong or destructive. It is to help them to open to a relationship with Christ. That's our purpose. Or at least it should be. May we seek then to truly be the Lord's instrument. May we seek in all that we do. In humility. compassion, mercy, and love to truly lead others to Christ.